Good afternoon. Welcome to our special Christmas service here at St. John's. Our overall Christmas theme is overflowing with joy. And what happened on that first Christmas night caused the angels themselves in heaven to rejoice. But it didn't stay in heaven. It overflowed to the Judean countryside and to the shepherds who made their way to the manger. And so tonight, as we worship our Savior and celebrate his birth, we want to hear that message of the angels again. We want to go in spirit with the shepherds to the manger to see the one who brings us true joy, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Everything that you need for worship can be found in your worship folder or will also be on the screens. Also, if you have time during the service, and you will have time, uh, we ask you to please fill out a Connect card that you'll find in the pew. May the Lord bless our time together. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. To us a child is born, to us a son is given. Joined in worship on this sacred night, let us make confession to our Heavenly Father, confident of his forgiveness for Jesus' sake. Almighty Father, we confess that we are sinners by nature and by thought, word, and deed. We have not always given you the best of us, 
and have not fully made room for you in our lives. With repentant hearts, we turn to you for mercy, seeking your grace. In your loving kindness, forgive, restore, and lead us, so that we may be renewed and live to the glory of your holy name. With joy, I announce God's good news to you. Our gracious God, in his mercy, has given his son to be born, to live, and then to die for you and to rise again in glory. For his sake, God forgives you all your sins. Be at peace and rejoice in the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that as we have known on earth the wonder of that light, we may also behold him in all his glory in the life to come. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. A lesson from Titus chapter 3, verses 4 to 7. But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of righteous things that we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. A continued reading of Luke chapter 2. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child.
While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Please stand.
may be seated. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Tonight we meditate for a few minutes on that gospel section from Luke chapter 2. We begin with prayer. Lord, bless the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts. May they be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Dear friends in Jesus, our Savior, I received an early Christmas gift this year. I don't know if you can read that. Pastor warning, anything you say or do could be used in a sermon. <laughs> it was anonymous, so if it's one of you, you can fess up to me later on. <laughs> Pastor Walther got one as well. I have not worn mine out yet. Um, but I bring it up because it reminded me of a conversation I was having with a friend. And I asked him what was his favorite part of the Christmas story that we just heard. And right away he said, it was, it's the shepherds. And I said, well, why? And he said, because the shepherds were nobodies. And he was right. The shepherds, they weren't popular, they weren't wealthy, they didn't have their own YouTube channels, they were extremely underappreciated. And yet, out of all the people on the planet to whom God would first announce good news of great joy, he chose to share that with the shepherds, which is good news for anyone else who feels overlooked or unknown or unappreciated at Christmas time. It means what we just sang a little bit earlier, that there's, there's room and welcome there for me and for you. No matter who you are, the good news that brings great joy is that a Savior has been born to you. Those shepherds, that group of nobodies, suddenly felt like they were somebody's on that first Christmas night. And so they ran to Bethlehem to see this thing that had happened, that the angels had told them about. And when they got there, they saw the scene that gives Christmas such special meaning. Mary and Joseph snuggled around the precious child. And Mary's hair, it always looked so good. I am so glad that her hairdresser was able to work on Christmas morning. And Joseph, he looks so calm and happy and content, not at all irritated that not a single one of his relatives in that city where he descended from had he and Mary stay that night for Jesus to be born. And not at all angered or upset that no Christmas card will ever be created where it shows him holding the baby. In other words... What the shepherds saw when they arrived at Bethlehem, if we are to believe what the Christmas cards and the pictures show us or tell us, was kind of like the very first Hallmark Christmas movie. A few bumps along the way, but then it ended up just perfect. But we don't know for sure that it was like that. The angels did give some details to the shepherd about the baby that they would see, that they would find him wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. But they didn't give any details about the parents, what Joseph and Mary would be doing, what they would be feeling when the shepherds walked in on them. But people still like to imagine. Back in the 1800s, there was an artist named Jerry Mel Melchers, and his goal in painting pictures was to depict life as it really is. And so, for example, he has one picture that is titled The Sermon, and it depicts a young girl who has fallen asleep in church, because apparently things like that happened back in the 1800s. <laughs> but he has another picture painting. It's called The Nativity. Because he, like so many others, wanted to, to capture that mood from that first Christmas night. 
But his painting is quite different from the ones that we normally see. This is what it looks like. Notice Mary isn't smiling. She isn't holding the baby. She's just lying there on the floor, exhausted. Probably for the same reason that any woman would after giving birth without a mattress to lie on, without nurses to attend to her, without an epidural to dull the pain, uh, without Facebook or Instagram to post a picture of the newborn child. And Joseph, well, he's still not holding the baby. He's just sitting there, not smiling, just staring at, at some spot on the floor just beyond this new responsibility that he had never planned on. And maybe he was, was wondering how long his family was going to be homeless or where he was going to find a job there in Bethlehem so that he could support his mother and this, this kid that, that really wasn't his in the first place. And we don't know what the weather was like. There, wasn't a meal train that brought the next casserole coming that they wouldn't be able to bake anyway. And then there was this growing to-do list for them that was, was now before them with the number one item on it, raising God. And don't mess it up for the rest of us. I don't know how that compares to your to-do list, but I do know that you have to-do lists. Uh, it's the most common question this time of year. What are you going to do for Christmas? Or what did you do for Christmas? And even if I wouldn't look at your Christmas list, I bet I could guess what's on it. A lot. Usually it's the three P's, parties, presents, and plenty of other things. During this most wonderful time of year when everybody tells you to be of good cheer... But it's not always so easy to do that, especially this time of year. And not just because your to-do list is, is really, really long, but maybe because for, for some of you, this is the very first Christmas that someone really important is gone. And then there's those things that we wish would be gone, but they're not. Like the crime that doesn't go on vacation during the holidays. And the unrest around the world that we just continue to hear about every day in the news. And then for some, it's when they, they look in the mirror and they wonder if they have become something that they once promised themselves or someone else that they would never become. And then there's all of those things that we wish we weren't really good at doing all year long, like feeling so worried or sad, or alone. Even sometimes sleeping right next to your spouse or standing right in the middle of a big party. We wish that it wasn't so easy for us to get overwhelmed with anxiety and to lose our patience so quickly and to focus so much on getting all these things done that we don't remember the last time that we just paused and asked some of the people living in our own home how they're doing. Have you ever wondered how you would respond if in addition to all of the things that you have to do, God added one more thing to your list by putting the Savior of the world in your womb? Mary and Joseph didn't have to wonder. Whether they were ready or not, the Son of God was going to be raised under their roof. And since they lived in the same dark world that we live in, where it is so easy to become overwhelmed and afraid when things in your life do not go according to plan, and because it must have been so painful and so lonely for them, to leave their closest family and friends and go and live in a place that literally had no room for them. I wonder if this teenage mother on that night, after who knows how many hours of 
unmedicated labor, I wonder if she cried herself to sleep that first Christmas night. And I wonder if Joseph was glad when Mary finally did fall asleep because then he could cry too and no one would see. Except that's when the shepherds unexpectedly walked in and then everyone knew. It's what the angels were rejoicing about. It's why the angels did not tell the shepherds to marvel at what Joseph and Mary were doing, but instead told them to look at the manger and see that Christmas, at least the first time that it happened, wasn't about our to-dos. Christmas wasn't about what you or I or Joseph or Mary should or shouldn't do. On that first Christmas, Christmas was entirely something that God did. And we'll sing about it in, or we'll hear a duet sung to us in a little bit. It was a holy, holy, holy moment when God responded to, to the cries of, of anyone who has ever spent any amount of time waiting for good news and hungering for help and praying for strength and worrying that they've already failed at life and, and wondering if things are going to be okay. He responded by coming to dwell with us. He chose to be born right in the middle of our dark world so that he could hunger and cry and suffer and die for every tribe, people, language, and nation. On Christmas Day, God put on soft newborn baby skin that he knew one day would be pierced and ripped and torn away so that no matter who you are or no matter what you have done and no matter where you are in this dark world, you will always be able to find one place to look where you see one friend who promises to always be with you to the very end, no matter what it costs him. And he is the one who, by the way, happens to also be your Savior, who forgives all of your sins, whose life and light could not be snuffed out even by the darkness of death, and who now, risen from the grave, promises you a day when you will experience the miracle of having all of your tears wiped away. And I think that's why people were so amazed when the shepherds told them about everything that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Not because everything was so picture perfect on that, that first Christmas night, but because it wasn't always easy for them either to wait and to hunger and to pray and to wonder if they were going to be okay. But Christmas is God's answer that you will be. Not because of anything that you have to do to make it happen, but because Christmas is the day that God assured you, no matter who you are, that a Savior has been born to you. Merry Christmas. Amen. We continue now with the offering and the candle lighting. I would ask you to, if you filled out your Connect card, to please put your Connect card in the offering plate as it is passed by you. And then after the offering, we will also light our candle candles. And, and Pastor Walter and I will light our candles from the Christ candle, a reminder that Jesus is the light of the world, and whoever follows him will never walk in darkness. And then we will take our candles and we will come down the center aisle and we will light your candles and you can pass light as you go down. And that's a reminder that we all have the privilege to be able to be lights in the world and to share the message of Jesus Christ. And just one little tip, as you are lighting, take your unlit candle and you can kind of have it this way, right? And then once it's lit, you hold it upright, and then the next person holds it sideways. That way we can um, 
avoid wax steam drips.
Let us pray for God's mercy, asking that he would hear our petitions and grant them according to his gracious will. Almighty and everlasting God, as we recall the first Christmas, we thank you for the gift of Jesus Christ, who came to earth in deep humility as he left the glory of your eternal kingdom in coming to earth to be our Savior, our brother, and our friend. Lord, in your mercy. As we think of your chosen servants, Mary and Joseph, we thank you for the gift of family. Grant that we always treasure the gifts that we receive through them and seek to be those who cherish our family, our church family, our friends, and our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. As we fill this sacred space with song, we thank you for the gifts of poetry and music and for writers and composers who have enriched our celebration with their devotion and creativity. Grant that we ever seek to bring you all that is the best and most beautiful in our worship. Lord, in your mercy. As we hear again of the shepherds to whom the angels brought the greatest, greatest of news, we thank you for those who serve in various vocations of life, including those whose daily work goes unnoticed or underappreciated. We commend to your special care, Lord, those in the military, our first responders and medical personnel, and all whose service keeps them distanced from their family homes in these days. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all situations and conditions of people, especially those on our hearts at this time, including Dale Dietz and his family as they anxiously await results of a recent medical test. Also, Madeline Velgu, who is now recovering at home after a time in the hospital due to a fall. And for Roger Rosinski, who has upcoming back surgery. Be with all who need our petitions and our concern. Bless them according to their needs, Lord, and give us opportunities to be a comfort and, ass and assistance in your name. Lord, in your mercy. As we pray, gracious Father, we remember our dear ones who have completed their earthly lives and now are in your eternal keeping. Grant that we follow their footsteps in ways of peace and love throughout our lives as we live to your glory as those on whom your favor rests. Lord, in your mercy. These and any other things you would have us ask of you, Heavenly Father, grant to us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. May he who by his incarnation gathered into one all things earthly and heavenly fill you with such joy that comes from the forgiveness of sins and the hope of eternal life and the blessing of God Almighty the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always.
Hello once again. Glad you could join us for our Christmas worship. If you haven't, at this time you can extinguish your candles. And when you are leaving, you can um, give it to one of the ushers who will be standing back there, probably, I'm assuming, with a box. You can put it right in there. So to my family, <laughs> you can extinguish your candles. <laughs> Um, one bit of uh, news, one good announcement, um, is that uh, Matthew Redfield, who is holding a call to um, our, our school for fifth grade, has accepted the call, so we're really happy to hear that he is going to be attending. So Matt, his wife, and six kids will be moving here this summer, so please keep them in your prayers, um, and please keep their church and school in Falls Church, Virginia, in your prayers as well. Otherwise, the celebration doesn't stop here. Uh, we hope that you can join us tomorrow at 9 o'clock for our Christmas Day worship, and then you'll also see the other upcoming worship schedule in your worship folder. God's blessings, and Merry Christmas. <laughs>